So, you've got a 1911. You've got 1911 magazines. You've got an AR-15. Good times. But what if there was a way to make those good times even more good? Or as they say in some places, better? By combining all of those things in a more meaningful way. As it turns out, there is. With the 1915 magazine adapter from Blind Squirrel Enterprises. And that's what we're going to talk about today here on Hipster Tactical. Alright, the 1915 magazine adapter from Blind Squirrel Enterprises. And long story short, this is an adapter that lets you use any 1911 mag, 45 or 9mm, in a standard mil spec AR lower. And full disclosure, Blind Squirrel did send me these products to review. I was, of course, flattered when they asked me to do that and was like, cool, I get to shoot more stuff and talk about it on. YouTube, so great. So if you're new to my channel, I typically do reviews on kind of unique, interesting pistols that you don't see every day. You know, stuff like the Walther P5, I got a review on that. The HK P9S, it's a really cool one. The Browning High Power, got a review on this too. If you like that kind of stuff, definitely explore my channel, but I also like this kind of stuff. So um, that brings us to today's review. 1915 magazine adapter from Blind Squirrel. I just think this is a very innovative product. It's, you know, the business case for it. If, if you look at pistol caliber carbines, there's, you know, there's plenty of options for nine millimeter, but especially when it comes to 45, there's not as many good options. You can buy like like dedicated 45 builds, which you know are pretty expensive, and I'm not sure how many people are looking to invest in a completely new standalone firearm to shoot 45 through a rifle. And then there are other magazine adapters out there too. There's one from Stern Defense, which uses Smith and Wesson M&P mags. There's one from Macon Macon Arms. That uses like proprietary magazines that they provide, and then there's another one that uses HK pattern magazines. Well, certainly, you know, people have those magazines, and people probably have MP magazines. A lot more people have 1911s, and those people have 1911 magazines. And, uh, you know, another cool thing is compared to all those other magazine adapter options that I just talked about, they're hundreds of dollars. One of these is 30 bucks. And I'll say it does not feel cheap. The quality of the plastic seems you know, very high grade. As we all know, as, as gun people, there's plastic and then there's plastic. There's like the plastic on the console of a Toyota Corolla. And then there's like the, the plastic that H&K uses for <laughs> the frames and its pistols. And this seems closer to the HK end of the spectrum. It's, it's very, it feels heavy duty, it feels solid, it feels like quality, and the little ejector that they included in the design, it seems very precisely machined and well made, and it's, I, I just love the simplicity of the design. It's just, you know, they took a simple idea and the execution is good and it's at a price point. I think that uh, a lot of people are gonna enjoy. So I guess your first question is, you know, how did it run? Was it reliable? And the answer is yes, it was 100% reliable. After I played with some different buffer springs, different uh, buffer weights. So obviously when you're kind of reconfiguring your rifle to shoot a different caliber, you've got to use a lot of third-party components and 
have them work in a harmonious way. And there's a lot of variables involved in that. So obviously you've got the type of magazine, you've got the adapter itself, you've got the upper, you've got, like I said, the, the buffer spring, the buffer weight, the buffer tube length. Those are all variables that come into play and can impact how reliably the gun's gonna cycle. Another thing uh, about you know going from like 556 five, rifle calibers with with a gas operated bolt to pistol calibers is generally you're going from a lock breech setup to a blow back setup a straight blow back setup so again the the forces and the momentum of the bolt and the physics of that is a little different than what it is with a gas operated setup but like i said i um once I messed around with the, the spring weights and everything, it, it ran 100%. It was a blast to shoot. So um, let's get into a little bit about how this thing works, and then we'll get into you know the setup that worked for me and kind of what I played around with in, in getting it to 100% reliability. The idea behind this is is really quite simple and quite ingenious if you ask me. It's it's just, um, this is a polymer housing and it's, it's two halves, kind of like a, I guess you could call it a clamshell, and it's got these two screws here and you know you take a standard screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, loosen it up a little bit you can see how the mag kind of fits in there and uh, I'll put it in the in the bottom here and it kind of clicks into place you've also got a machined ejector here that's built in to your adapter so that's so blind squirrel took care of that they put all that in there clicks in you just tighten it up I turned it the wrong way then they said you don't have to you know just tighten the hell out of it. It's just as long as it's snugged up a good amount, it's not going to move around on you. That's all you need. Then you, this is spaced again for a mil spec uh, AR-15 lower and I have a Colt M4 CR6920 and it works fine with that. So easy peasy. And then you know you just you load, you load the rounds like you would, you know, any other 1911 magazines. And it's a little, a little different because the adapter comes up right to the top of the mag, so you've got to kind of, kind of push down on it a little more. You can't really get your hand down here, but it, it's fine. I mean, I had, I had no issues with it. It's, it's easy enough to load. This will work with, with any, any 1911 mag. So. The ones they sent me to review are the Wilson Combat 10 round extended mags. These are the ones they recommend, the ones they had the most success with. And so that's what I did most of my testing with. And then uh, again, it also works with 9mm uh, 1911 mags. This is one of the 9mm 1911 mags they sent me. And I think this is a Ruger mag, actually. Chances are someone else makes it, like CMC or Checkmate or something. So how did it perform? First of all, I can say it was a hell of a lot of fun to just blast handgun calibers through a rifle and I'll, I'll roll in some shooting footage. But like I said, it's starting out, I, I had to try a couple different, mainly buffer and buffer spring setups uh, before I found a combination that, that ran perfectly. One other thing that Cameron at Blind Squirrel Enterprises told me was that basically based on their testing, if you have a rifle length um, buffer tube on your AR lower, you can basically use the the standard mil spec spring and buffer on that and it'll run pretty much seamlessly. And now that's not a guarantee. Again, you have to have a lot of different components playing nice with each other to get this thing to work. So there's always going to be variables, but Cameron said that they're, based on their testing, it was pretty much a plug and play swap like you don't have to worry about the buffer or the buffer spring if you've got a rifle length like m16 length 
buffer tube. Now mine being the Colt CR6920 M4, it has a carbine length buffer. So when you have the, the slightly shorter buffer, then they said you've got to play around with some weights to, to get the right momentum and the right spring energy and everything set up to, to run in that shorter buffer tube. So, you know, and they sent me all the stuff to test out and I, I did. And the setup that, that worked best for me and I, I got 100% reliable seamless function with um, both 45 the the 45 setup and the 9 millimeter setup I used a spring co extra power buffer spring and uh, this is the packaging for it and I'm not necessarily suggesting you have to use a spring co one but this is their extra power buffer spring and here it is it has a red you'll see it has a red kind of um, ink on on this end of the spring and then I used a medium weight buffer this I think I think is an h2 buffer the like the lightest one is h1 and then you have the h2 and I, I from what I can see the h2 ones are always like blue I don't know exactly what company made this they all kind of look the same and then you have the h3 which is kind of like a, a reddish tip and that's the heaviest so with the mid weight and this heavy heavy recoil spring I had seamless function like I said with both calibers now as I was testing it you know I initially I had I had some issues where the first round wouldn't chamber in in the 45 uh, mags and it was just kind of nose diving interestingly when I downloaded the mags the 10 round Wilson's to like seven that never happened all right I got the Wilson mag loaded to six now I'm trying to see if that works better Seed seed. Chambered. That worked good. The buffer spring is kind of competing against, to some degree, the, the tension on from the mag, and once I went to this heavier recoil spring, I mean, it just plowed plowed the round straight through, straight into the chamber, and never had a problem chambering, you know, when I was charging the gun, um, like I was with the, the lighter recoil springs. Now, then, as I, once that issue was solved, I, I was started to, I started with the lightest buffer weight, and then I had a few failures to feed, you know, while shooting in the mags. Once I switched to the H2 buffer, I went up and weight to that. I never had another failure to feed. I put five or six mags through it, just mag dumping it as fast as I could. Chambered. Chambered. Second mag with the nine mil. You know, if you get one of these things in, you know, you have a carbine length buffer, this might be where you start, depending on what upper you use and, and everything and the different, you know, different brand of magazines you're using. You could have some variants, but um, this setup worked for me, again, with the Springco Extra Power 
buffer spring and the H2 buffer weight. As far as the, the uppers and the bolts that I was using, both the uppers were from TACCOM. This is the 45 cal one, you can see TACCOM there. The um, 9 millimeter one also is, is TACCOM, but it, it is the, the 9 millimeter super feed from TACCOM. The 45 bolt is from Caw Valley Precision. And then the 9 millimeter bolt is from AR Stoner, which I think might be like an in-house brand for Midway, not 100% sure. Interestingly, the, the 45 bolt from Caw Valley does not have the little shelf on the bottom of the breech face, and it has kind of the more broad, more AR-15 style extractor, whereas the, the 9 millimeter bolt from Stoner does have the little shelf on the bottom of the breech face. It has a more pistol, a smaller pistol style hook for its extractor. I'll also say where, you know, both uppers are from the same brand, TACCOM, the 9mm one had a little, little feed ramp kind of built into the bottom, uh, you know, right below the breech. The 45 one didn't, and I am assuming that's just because there's less space, you know, with the larger round and 45, so that, that could be a thing. And interestingly, Blind Squirrel actually provided for, whereas some uppers may or may not have feed ramps, they have a little nook here in their, their housing to accommodate uppers that may have feed ramps, so that's, that's pretty smart. I also, I tested like a mil-spec GI mag that I had laying around, and it worked, but, you know, if you look on Blind Squirrel's YouTube channel, they have some tips and tricks on how to get optimal reliability. And one of the things they recommend is using 1911 mags that have kind of the support, the anti-tilt support in front. They recommend mags that have this kind of front here to prevent tilting. And uh, so that's, that's where I'd start if you get one of these. Um, again, the GI mags don't have that. Once I got the function reliable, I still didn't, it wasn't 100% with the GI mags, but it was with the Wilson mags. Another thing to mention is the trigger setup you've got in your rifle or carbine. Um, when you are going to a straight blowback setup, a typical mil spec trigger group in your AR will not work because the blowback setup puts more pressure and more force on the, the hammer and trigger components. So you're going to need to install a trigger that is rated for pistol caliber carbines or blowback operation in your, your gun. My AR Colt M4 was, was had the mil-spec trigger in it and Blind Squirrel sent me a drop-in trigger pack that was rated for um, pistol caliber carbines. This is the SLT2 from KE Arms, and it's a nice trigger. It's a, it's a straight trigger, but uh, drop right in. The good thing is, I, I think most of the triggers that are rated for like a, a pistol caliber blowback operation will also work with, you know, the normal gas operated uh, lock breech setup on, on the rifle. I, I, I think as, as a general rule, but don't don't hold me to that. You can conceivably just get one trigger group that, that can work for everything and just, just run run your setup with that. So in conclusion, I um I don't have a ton of experience with, with pistol pistol caliber carbines, but you know this was fun. Getting getting a rifle set up for for handgun calibers is just is just fun. Well, I'm probably not going to go out and and spend, you know, 600 bucks for a dedicated carbine that's chambered in 9mm or 45 or whatever. You know, if I was set up for for 1911s and I had a lot of magazines laying around and all I had to do was go buy an upper, play with some some spring rates with the buffer yeah, th I mean, this would be a great option to just have that experience of shooting a pistol caliber carbine for less budget and just kind of utilizing the things that I already have. These are available right now. You can go on Blind Squirrel's website, order them. Uh, like I said, they're 30 bucks a pop and you, you can get like a three pack for, for like a, a discount. So definitely check them out. In talking with, with Cameron, the gentleman who uh, kind of does their marketing and operations. Really nice guy. His associate is an engineer. They just kind of had this idea and it's a really good idea and it's 
all 100% American made. So definitely give them, give them a look if you're interested in this kind of thing. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I want to thank Blind Squirrel and Cameron for sending me this cool shit to play with and put it on YouTube. I want to thank my local range, uh, Queen City Shooters. They're really cool and good prices for range time, good prices for transfers, which I, I take advantage of that a lot. If you're in the greater Cincinnati area, check out Queen City Shooters in Independence, Kentucky. And I'll also say they often have some just cool kind of interesting firearms on the shelves there when, when I walk in. Um, case in point, I just picked up this IMI SP21 Barak, which is sort of a like a Jericho pattern pistol, but it's got this unique strange dual recoil spring setup. So I have a short on this, you know, I'll probably review it at some point and do like a formal review. It has a push button decocker, which I love. And if you like hip hop beats, like the one I had in the intro, check out my SoundCloud. Link is in the description. And until next time, this is Hipster Tactical, and I am Matt.